What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you learn how to reach people online, attract attention, build influence, convert them into ideal clients, all that fun stuff. We've got a great guest, Mike Suevis, if I'm saying that correctly, is uh, is with us. I probably screwed that up completely right off the bat. I should have asked you that in pre-show, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, we're talking about video content. We're talking about consistency. We're talking about what you can post. How do you get attention? How do you convert that attention into leads that actually turn into appointments and sales. So we've got a lot of stuff to get into as we always do. This is right in the sweet spot of what we all talk about. So I'm excited. We've got lots of opinions. I'm sure there's lots of things that I would disagree with everyone else on and I will be summarily shouted down. Um, the person who will be doing that shouting down today is uh, the junior grandmaster himself, Greg Mataniel in the co-pilot seat. What's up today? What up, homie? You've been beating me over the head like a ready to step child because my audio is not on point, which I deeply apologize. I've tried multiple things, but Gene has merely smacked me. You've smacked me. Mike has been nice to me. So fuck you, fuck you. You're cool, and I'm out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use it. Wow. <laughs> All right. We've got Eva Bald Ninja. Gene is with us here as well. What's up today? Yeah, what up, y'all? I'm just out here changing the world. Yeah, really? What, 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 what pray tell are you doing? Are you buying Bitcoin or something? What's, what's going on? Actually, that's pretty funny. You say that we have been, uh, I've been messing around with this Dogecoin. Hey. My portfolio is through the roof. Thank you, Elon Musk. All right. I know. I know nothing about it. I just know what I see going on on Instagram and Twitter. So anyway, all right. So Mike, let's officially bring you in. Uh, can you please correctly pronounce your name and then tell us just a little bit about who you are, what you do? Well, you, you pronounce my name just like everybody else does. Everyone butchers it, so I wouldn't expect anything differently, especially on Uncensored here. Uh, so it's all it's all good. But you could say Cuevas, Cuevas, Cuevas. It means cave in Espanol. Okay. Um, but my name is uh, Michael Cuevas. Uh, I have a company called The Real Estate Marketing Dude, and uh, we do a lot of video content creation, and I think that's what we're talking about today. So I'm really excited to be here. Um, we had Craig mm -hmm. on our show, and it was a fucking blast. Um, <laughs> and then after that show, we're like, oh, we got to schedule because it's like, this is like our, our crew here. We have potty mouths and um, you know, I think you're going to see that in a little bit. And I'm sure your audience already knows that about you guys. Yeah, so. I was, was going to say having Greg on the show means it was a shit show, but we got it. I mean, you're being kind. I understand. <laughs> Easy there, killer. Okay. So Mike, what's, uh, what's your background? How did you get into doing what you do? Guys, so um, I accidentally uh, accidentally ended up in real estate. It was uh, my college professor. I need three hours to graduate. And they're like, oh, you can make a lot of money in real estate. So those are the last three college elective hours I took. Uh, graduated college and I got a job working at a brokerage and that's all I've ever did up until 2017. So I was an agent for about 18 years, but I fucking hated, um, lead generation. Like I hate the prospecting side of this business. It makes me feel yeah. so gross and slimy and cold calling prospecting all the old school shit that no one likes doing. Um, I hated doing, but what we were really good at is creating a lot of attention around our brands. Um, and before video and social and all that shit came about, this is like 2002, we had to do that with direct mail, client events. Um, I turned my brand into a cartoon. So I was always doing something a little bit differently because I believe that the whole real estate business isn't based on your skills. I think it's based on your popularity. And then your skills come into play, but you have to be the first person people think of. Um, otherwise, you just get passed up. That's why so many people log on to Facebook and you know have a dagger go through their heart after their best friend just bought a house with Greg. Not that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the story. Look at, happy. <laughs> well, look at Greg. Greg's got a ton of attention in his market. Look how much deals he does. And he's goofy as fuck. And it's not because like you would think like on my show, I remember when Greg came on, he goes, uh, what where were you? You had your toenails painted like green or pink or something. He picks up a fucking $2 million listing. Yeah. Like people don't hire you for what you do. They hire you for how you do it. And with, especially with COVID and with social, this entire business has gone from professional to personable. Mm. Um, and that has changed night and day from 2002 when I started. You, you used to have to dress up. I remember wearing a suit down Michigan Avenue and you dress up like, and you'd have to be with a big brokerage back then. But that was only 15, 20 years ago. The markets changed. You could sell real estate in, in sandals. I, my brand was, I was, I was Greg in Chicago and I was selling real estate. That was my brand pretty much. Same mentality, same personality. Don't give a shit. Take it as it was. And it works. And it turns people off too. But that's the whole point. You're supposed to do that with content creation. It is. It, yeah. it, the big thing about that, Mike, is the fact that I quick, picked up another $1.75 million listing yesterday. <laughs> Dude, what were you, what were you wearing? Were you, wearing wait, were you even wearing anything is the question. I was wearing nothing. I was bucking. I bet. Um, but no, sir, I was wearing uh, flip-flops. Yes, painted toenails uh, with cargo shorts, a t-shirt that uh, 
you know, I said, I, I have curb appeal. I, as I was wearing the same baseball hats at barbecue, you know, shop, you know, bait, uh, place here in, in town. And you know what? I didn't even have to sit down with them and do a listing presentation. I just literally said, hey, you know what? I, I want to push the market. I want to go to 1.75. I think you can get 1.7, but we're going to push the market a little bit to 1.75. And I'm like, what do you think? She's like, I'm down. Let's go. And the funny thing is that we sold the house to her <laughs> 15 years ago. <laughs> And it's literally that simple. It's because people will literally get to know you uh, because of your persona and, and who you are. I've never had someone tell me that, you know, don't show up here wearing jeans and a t-shirt or, or foot flops and, and shorts and in a multi-million dollar market. It just doesn't happen in my area. Like, do you think yeah. Josh Altman actually gives goes through listing presentations, guys, or any of these million dollar agents? Um, no, they don't have to. Like, no one goes through a listing. Like, everyone always asks, hey, what, I need the listing presentation or I need the script. None of that shit matters. That's just noise. Um, people are the people when they come over to your house, you're already hired nine times out of 10. <laughs> and the reason why I like content so much is not so much that it demonstrates that we're in. It demonstrates personality and it's the human side of our business. And that's what people hire. Um, if you're getting an appointment to go to someone's house, you're already halfway in the door. So you're already hired. You're going there to close the deal, but you have to get to that conversation to get the appointment first. And that's where attention comes in and why we like video to create popularity. I think it's just a giant popularity contest. And mm, the uh, attention, all of life is high school. Got to love it. It is. When, you, when I was in high school, I used to, my parents would go out of town and then I would have keg parties. And then that next week or two months, I'd be the coolest kid in class because I had all the attention. It's the same fucking thing right now. Um, everybody does college. Same way. I always had the parties. I had all the attention and I was really popular. I had a lot of friends. Well, I took that concept. It's the same thing in real estate. Um, here's a true story. I'm sitting at a bar with my friend. We're having beers and, uh, it's about 5 PM 22 and we're getting drunk. And he goes, Hey Mike, I just referred the smoking hot realtor, um, a $400,000 listing. And when you're 22 years old, $400,000 is $10,000. It's a shitload of money at that age. And I'm like, is she hot? Wait, dude, you forgot I was in real estate. What the fuck? I went home and I, I went home and I cried and I was like, holy shit. My best friend doesn't even know what the hell I do for a living. Yeah. Who else doesn't know what I do for a living? How are you going to run a referral based business if nobody knows what the hell you do for a living? So content creation is no longer um, optional. It's a necessity. And I think if you're not doing it, you're going to be out of business. Or you're going to be working for someone soon. So let's talk about content creation. A lot of people and uh, we all may be wrong on this but what is the right content creation uh matt and gene are both vigorously avoiding this conversation as they do other things while matt, mike you and i you know engage in a human conversation these <laughs> have decided not to do that with us it's um, I, I, we're, we're trying taking to engage them. with the audience greg we are live <laughs> <laughs> what 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 is the what is what is content creation what does that look like where do you start i mean should you be doing it every day, every other day, once a week, once a month, once a year? Should you talk about your dog, your fluffy kitty, uh, your goldfish, you know, your goldfish named Matt? Um, I mean, how do you start with that? So just, um, just like we all have different fingerprints, we all have different brands. So your content creation strategy is going to be different than mine. It's going to be different than Gene's. It's going to be different than everybody's. And everybody has one because we all have a brand. That's the differentiator. People hire our brands, not what we sell. We all sell the same shit. In your market, you have access to the MLS. You're selling the exact same thing. All of us are. The differentiation in what people hire is how we do it and what they remember. So with content creation, it's going to be very obvious. So let's just use another example that'll make it easier for people to understand. We all have seen the show Diners, Dives, and Drives, or Dives, or whatever the fuck you call it. Guy Ferrari. Dude, um, has I'm so stuck on that damn show. It's not even funny. So it's a food show, right? Now, it's a broad category food. What kind of food is he creating? It's grease pit dude food for hangovers, period. You don't see you don't see him going up to the French uh, laundry and creating an interview on a five star Michelin restaurant because it doesn't fit his brand. He's the host of the show, but the show is what builds his brand because it's not content that he has to create. The content that he creates is already preset. So, you know, he's covering dude food, right? Because he fits the brand. If he was covering Michelin restaurants, he'd be wearing a suit. So the answer is going to be different for every single person. So I have a guy out by you, Greg, that's got a cool show. He's a mortgage broker. And uh, this is geographically based. I like creating a show that dictates or demonstrates or sort of hints at what the content subject matter is going to be. So in this case, I have a guy who's a mortgage broker, and uh, we came up with a show in the Bay Area, which you'll understand this. It's called Hella Smart. 
<laughs> Welcome to Hella Smart, the one show that showcases on smart living throughout the Bay Area. Why? Because it's fucking expensive. So uh, someone who needs to talk about numbers in a nerdy way can now have the excuse to do it just because he's saying hella smart. And no one's going to remember what the fuck he says on video. They're going to remember how he says it. And when he says hella smart, that's the jingle that people will remember. So think of it back to Got Beef, uh, Wendy's commercials. You guys remember those? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't Got Beef or Got, was it Got Meat, whatever the fuck she said? I got it was that it was that it was a grandma in an old nightgown that people remembered. If you would have had anyone else delivering that message, that campaign is not the most successful in Wendy's history. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very it's, like so it's, it's, it's like flow, 100%. right? Right. So yeah. she's so annoying. She's so goddamn annoying that you know, but we could talk about her. We know who she works for and what she does. And then and then she dresses up as a man on it as well. Like drives me crazy. But it's good. Look at Sh member ShamWow. Yeah, Why did Sham yeah. Wild tell so many damn things? We're still talking about it. That, that was an infomercial from the fucking 90s, you guys. And everyone knows what Sham Wild is. The, the, you go on YouTube and pull it up. How that guy, he was the micro machine guy. And how he said it was his brand. He's fast. So your brand, there's everyone scripts in a certain way. And I'll give you a different example. When I was single in Chicago, I might do a neighborhood tour. And that neighborhood tour in downtown Lincoln Park is covering the where the hot chicks hang out, the restaurants, where we party at. Today, me doing the exact same neighborhood tour talks about the parks, the kid-friendly restaurants, and the schools. My brand's changed, and how I would do a con how I do an interview or a create content on that specific neighborhood would be dependent upon my fucking brand. The reason where people mess up on video is that they start doing video to check a box. It doesn't enforce their brand, and that's when you look awkward on it, and you have zero body language, and you're talking about real estate market updates in front of a whiteboard. Okay, let's talk about that really quick. I want to break that down. When you say awkward, I want you. I want to want you to break that down. What what would awkward look like? I mean, it does look like Matt. It does look like Gene, and it does look like me at different times. We all, you know, do things and content that we may or may not be completely comfortable with. So, how do we identify? And Mike, probably you too. How how do we identify content that might not be the right content for us to talk about? Well, if you're not smiling in it, you're not the right content. Period. You have to be having fun what you're doing. Otherwise, you're doing it the wrong way. It's not about, um, and here, here's why. Let's just go back to how people communicate. The video is not a lead generation platform. It's a communication strategy that has a lot of impact. And that's if you approach it that way, it's different. So I'm not focused on conversion. I'm focused on attention. And the only way I'm going to get attention is through authenticity. So if you had me, I'm not scared to get on video. I think everybody knows that by now. But um if I were to get on video and you had me doing uh, content on, on cooking, I'm going to have my arms to the side. I'm going to be like, what the fuck am I doing here? Because I don't like talking about cooking. So I have to be excited about what I'm talking about. So when communication on video is uh, presented, here's how our brains actually um, work. Because 90% of it's based on body language and tonality. That only happens when you like saying what you're saying. If you ever seen like a market update, there's an agent in front of a whiteboard. Oh, the interest rate today. No one gives a shit. The only people who comment on that is the mortgage broker trying to take you to coffee, lunch, or whatever the fuck they do. The title rep trying to get your business or the real estate broker trying to recruit you. Why? Because the content's weak. It's boring. And boring will put you out of business. Okay. So let's talk about not being boring. What would be something in Matt and Dean? Matt, I know, Matt, you have a lot of things to say. I, I see you sitting in the background. Um, oh, hi, Matt. Oh, hello, Matt. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to like content creation and everything else and how not to be boring and gene the same thing i mean i think what mike is saying is so incredibly powerful i mean your your your, your body language will speak volumes in regards to how interested you are in whatever you're going to be talking about so uh johnson face uh what, what is how, how how is something that has impacted you when i you and i have worked together when you know i'm excited about something uh, wow. What, what kind of a convoluted question was that? I have no idea what that was, so I'm just going to ignore it. And I'm just going to talk. Um, <laughs> I think he was all, referencing that first time. Remember that one question? Like, when did you guys all hook up? Yeah, I, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I, don't know. I have no idea. Um, yes. I mean, first of all, uh, authenticity wins. I think it helps if you're because I, I see everything through the lens of introvert, extrovert. Look, if you're an extrovert and you show up on video, you're going to be more extreme, your personality is going to come through with more force, uh, video is going to be easier for you, period, end of story, right? Yeah. So if you're an extrovert, just get on fucking video and just be an extrovert, good enough. Um, 
if you're an introvert, that's where things I think ha get a little bit more. You have to be very intentional and strategic about what you say, because Mike, you pointed out like if, if you don't resonate with what you're saying, if it doesn't feel authentic to you, if you can't get enthusiastic, if you're not smiling while you say it, um, it's not going to work. And you're you're absolutely right. Um, I think introverts of all people have the hardest time faking it. Right. Mm -hmm. If I have to get on video and talk about something I don't want to talk about, it's very obvious. And Greg, you know, you've been on shows where I was not happy to be there. And I'm like, you know, we had a guest that did not, I did not agree with, and I do not enjoy those at all. Uh, and it's very obvious and I have a hard time hiding it. I can't, I cannot hide when I'm unhappy. Uh, I think a lot of introverts are that way. So you do have to find the content that you're excited about. And Mike, you talked about not just doing content to check a box. Uh, look, if you're passionate about the market update, then it's not, it's not going to be boring. The, if right. you're doing a market update just to do it, yes, it's going to be boring. But if you're actually bringing people information that you're excited about for whatever reason, then it's not going to be boring if that's authentic to you. Um, it's I think it's hard for people to find, especially for introverts, to find what that is that they are that gets them so excited that they are smiling while they deliver yeah. that content. You know what I'm saying? And that that's where Good working question. with someone like you helps because you can help get into their head crack open their skull and figure out what do you love to talk about? Oh, I love to talk about wine. I'm going out to a wine bar four nights a week. Great. Talk about that. Uh, and I don't think people realize how do you connect that to real estate, but find so like it's better to find something, especially if you're in real estate and people understand what you do, it's better to find something you can talk about and be authentic about. And just at the end, tack on the fact that you're an agent than it would be to get on and do a market update. So hundred percent, there's a lot of questions there. Let's unpack them. Introverts. <laughs> um, so I get a lot of introverts and they'll be like, oh, I'm introvert. Okay, great. Are you introvert when you get to a client? Because if you do, you're not going to have a sale. Um, when you're creating content, I'm always creating it for one person at a time, even though it's being broadcast to many. But back to the introvert question, everybody has something they like doing, whether they're introvert or not. The example I just gave you about hella smart, that guy's extremely introverted, um, but he likes talking about numbers. We just had to do create a cool way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the... Um, so there's always a way. And here's, here's another, there's yep. a gal, she's in, um, uh, Texas and we did her brand and she, like when I, I met, I met up with her and, uh, I go, there he is. He just commented Rodell. There's a, there he is a fucking hella smart. There you go with Rodell. So I met this girl in, um, he's watching the show. So I, I met this girl in, um, she's in, we branded her. Right. And she's an extreme introvert. Okay. So I find out what the hell she does and what she did before she got into real estate. She's a licensed therapist. So now she's your mm. real estate therapist. Mm. She likes talking about real estate. Okay. So she, it's okay to talk about real estate. You just have to make it fun. So we created a show for her called house PhD because a therapist would have a PhD. And mm. now she could talk about the science of real estate in her way. And people will remember it because she should be doing it wearing a white coat. It's yeah. how we do it. Not the what. Uh, the wine example. Perfect. We had a gal and she gave a uh, how to sell your house, how to market your house the right way. And she just used examples of wine bottles. One was a really high end wine and she was talking about positioning. This one has a wax seal. That means it's worth $100 more than the one that does it. <laughs> you know, so there's always a way to tie it in the story. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a chef, do your market updates in the kitchen and have salt and pepper shakers as analogies. There's always a way to tie it in for entertainment. And it's not the content. That's what people say. Like, what is the script? I need the script. What do I say? It's not what to say. We know what to say. The scripts are the same throughout the country. The people delivering them individually is what's different. Yeah. I got so many, so many questions. I have so many questions. First question. Do you think that the sham wow guy, you remember him because of his pitch? Or do you think it was because he was beating up prostitutes in South Beach? <laughs> did that did that really happen to the Shamwell guy? You don't remember? Yeah, you don't remember that? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember, remember that. that. No, I don't. Oh remember my god! That. Yeah, there was a there was what? a mug shot of him. He was all well, beat up. Apparently, she bit his tongue off or something. I remember him from the way he said it, but I do remember when Pee Wee Herman got caught in a porn theater uh -huh. um, back back in the day. And Pee Wee Herman, though, look at that example. What, how did he? And he had the gray suit with the damn uh, red bow tie. Yep. That was the brand. It was how he was saying it. I have no idea what the hell he talked about. Yeah. I remember the bow tie. So, Mike, hmm. let me here's one that I get a lot of times, right? Like, I love what you're what you're throwing out because this is what I do on a regular basis. So I have a partner that handles like that element of it. My challenge in the marketing space, especially with real estate agents, has always been 
it's hard for me to get them to give me content, right? So I do all the distribution, but most of the time people want to see the person. They don't really care that there's a house for sale down the street from them. They more care that they can jive with this real estate agent. Like you said, by the time they get there, their job is to not screw the sale up, right? But you know, when, like, you know when you meet people, right? So you've been in this business for a long time. And I know within the first 10 minutes of looking at their social space and then watching how they act, whether or not they're going to be good on video. Like some people are just wet dish rags and some people have a glow that people follow, right? Yeah. So let's go to the other side. Let's talk about the people that you meet where you go, oh shit, this is going to be a tough one. Mm -hmm. How do you handle somebody that not only is nervous, that maybe looks disheveled, that has a terrible delivery, the cadence is off, like, do you shut that down and just go, look, you got a face for radio. Let's just continue down the audio path. Mm. <laughs> or do you, or how do you fix that? Like what's your editing. approach there in that case? That's, like, the beauty with, that's the beauty with editing. I mean, I could script and everybody, the first question is, are you more of a short form content creator or long form content creator? And if you're going to go short form, then basically short form people have to remember a sentence or so at a time because we're going to jump cut those. So that's just knowing how to produce and how to create. And um, I could give you example after example of people um, I'll, let me give you some from this week. So I, it took just this week. We shot a, we shot a video that took three hours to shoot three hours for a four minute video. It's the longest shoot I've ever had. We just reviewed it this morning and I was worried about it. It looks fucking amazing because it's all on the storytelling. So when you're scripting with editing, you can make anyone look good. It's just such a, um, you'd be surprised, but the people that are very extroverted tend to do better on live videos like that. And some yeah. people can run a whole brand off of live. So you have to take the individual and see what they need. Some people can just run lives and be great and they could create their own content. But I think the second part of that question though, is people are struggling about what to create. And the reason why we like creating a show is so it takes the attention off of them and people naturally script better that way. So if I have a show about me, I'm like, what the fuck do am I going to talk about? I don't care about myself. I don't want to talk about myself. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about their self. But if I have a show called the San Diego transplant, that defines what my job is to talk about. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes total sense. And I love this. Like, I love that you, it seems to me like you have a hook because that's where, like where my specialty is when I, when I jump on board with some of my clients, the creativity level is what I think separates my, me from other people. Like I, I, once I get to know you really well, I'll be able to spin the message based off of what you do. And I find too, that if it's, if it's something like for, for, let's just go back to the wine thing. If it's somebody that enjoys wine, I'll figure out how to tie that to their business down the road. The, the most important part is that they're going to continue to give me that content on a regular basis. And it's much easier for me to get that from them if they're enjoying what they're doing. Right. Yes, so like when 100%. it becomes less of a job and more of a hobby, there's more, it's like, so we're doing this thing. I'm flying down to Florida next week. And somebody said to me, what are you going to be doing? I'm like, I'm going to be sitting by the pool, entertaining, <laughs> real, drinking, entertaining realtors. That's what I'm doing. And we're probably going to golf on Friday. And people are like, that sounds like it sucks. And I'm like, that's why I'm excited to do what I do because I have the ability to go do that. If, if they said to me, you need to be in a suit and, and you have to put a wig on and wear whatever, I, I, that's not what I do, dude. That's, it would be very uncomfortable for me. So the fact that I can wear this blue shirt by a pool with flip-flops on and still do what I do is an amazing thing and makes me come back more and more. That's your uh, uniform. That's yeah. my uniform. Well, actually, if you know me, my uniform actually is a black V-neck. I have 500 black. And everybody makes fun of me. You should wear black more often. But that this is out of character for me. Here's uh, here's um, one of the things I see a lot of people get is that they instantly they either think they have to talk about themselves to prove themselves or they think they have to talk about real estate. But you guys, we don't sell houses. We sell the communities those houses li live at and, and yeah. reside in. And then once you it's all mindset. Right. It's it's you, HGTV is like people are like, oh, Mike, you're so smart. No, I'm not. I just copied fucking HGTV. Why don't you turn it on? Yeah, because yeah. everything there is nothing more than a story. And when we start storytelling, yeah. that reminds people people are consuming that content. What people don't want to do is talk about real estate all day round. And that's where a lot of people fall on their face. So here's why. Um, I don't talk about real estate with my friends all the time. I'm going to go golfing in about 30 minutes and I'm not going to talk about work for the rest of the day because if I did, my friends would stop asking me to go to golf with them yep. on Friday afternoon. So you can't talk about work with your damn database either. Otherwise, you're just constantly selling them. You need to be reminding them what you do, entertaining them in between 
and just remaining on top of mind so that when and if they are the they need your services or they know someone who do the first person that comes to mind is your fucking name and it only happens when you're all over the place yeah yeah dude you're everywhere that's what we go for the dude you're everywhere yep mm -hmm. omnipresent so, so if i was i'm curious because i and i some of these are lead-ins like i have i do a lot of this stuff so like I love to hear other people's takes on I, I'm always trying to get my bag of tricks better, right? So sure. for the agent that's like, all right, this dude, Mike Slick, somewhere down the road, I definitely think I could use him. But for now, because of my budget or because of whatever it is, my expert level, whatever, 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 I want to do these on my own. Are there any tips, tricks, tactics, equipment that you would recommend right out of the gate? Like if I was consulting with you and I said, I want to do this on my own for a year. If it works and I make money on it, I want to call you and you can do it for me. Right. What, what are like two or three things you would absolutely say I need to have, I need to do right now. Well, I'll just reach in your pocket, take out the damn cell phone <clears throat> one. Um, and that's all you need. So I'll share with you what I did before I started doing like production <clears throat> style videos. This is an easy strategy anyone could do. Um, I was one of bomb bombs first subscribers when they came out, it was like 2012. I remember we were doing an event and uh with this guy named jeff Loeb, and he's like look at this video email thing i'm like holy shit this is great because if i could get on video with my sphere i know my open rates are going to increase and i know i never have to talk about real estate so i was stuck by saying what the hell should i talk about and this is when i realized that the more you don't talk about real estate the bigger the brand will grow you still need to talk about it just not all the time and then i started i'm like what kind of, what's my content strategy going to be so I started thinking, I'm like, how do people stay in touch? So I just ripped off Hallmark's greeting card strategy and started wishing people two holiday greetings a month. And there's always two holiday greetings a month. I just picked the most off the wall ones to generate attention around. So here was my, my Valentine's Day email. Subject line is, I love you. That always gets open because people will say, who the fuck? Why? Someone says, I love you. I'm going to open the email up. Why they love me? <laughs> right? So great. It gets like a 60% open rate. And all I would do is this. You might be wondering why real estate agent is saying I love you. And if you might not know this, but 100% of my business comes from referrals from you, your friends, your family. So for that reason, I was told by my parents when I was young, I should tell people I care about, I love them on Valentine's Day and I absolutely care about you. Now, the other reason I wanted to send you this is I might as well tell you what the hell you're celebrating tonight and why we're there. And I'd give them a history lesson on how Valentine's Day came to creation. I referral programmed, I didn't talk about real estate and it created entertainment. I can't tell you how many people would call me the next day, Big Mike, this is weird, but we spent 20 minutes talking about you. I'm like, you guys are talking about your fucking real estate agent at Valentine's Day dinner. Like that is the shit, like that is attention folks. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Groundhog's Day, I would create video. I'd put a Groundhog's Day. I remember one year I put a Groundhog's Day. He's got a, a stuffed animal. And he saw his, uh, he didn't see a shadow. And it was freezing in Chicago. And it was a ton of weather out. Come in there. I'm like, you fucking Groundhog. <laughs> Kick his ass. And then I'm like, yeah, the Groundhog didn't see a shadow. Super Bowl is horrible. And I am so sick of this weather. It doesn't matter, you guys. Um, you just have to create content, but Hallmark did a really good job at staying in front of their people. They ran a whole business on it. So I know no one gets mad at getting holiday greetings and it's a cool way to give a tidbit of information. That's just an example. There's so many different things you could be doing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it. Love it. It's a great idea. Um, yeah, I think, uh, agents kind of, uh, over, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned that, that people have a tendency to either talk about themselves or talking about real estate, thinking they need to prove themselves. And I think it goes back to just, it was something I read in a book a long time ago, which is people don't understand how good you are at your job. It's really hard to get people that are hiring you as an expert to understand if you're actually better than other people. So that's not how they make their decision. It's not because they believe everybody has the same skill set with real estate. And that's the exact right. reason why each and every year, a couple of realtors lose that one or two deals to little cousin Billy, that little prick who just got his license, doesn't know shit. Mm -hmm. Or Aunt Susie, the blue haired realtor that's been in the business for 20 years, but yet she doesn't even know how to put a lockbox on top of a property. That's because blood is thicker than water, which tells you that relationship trumps all. Yeah, oh. 100%. That was pretty succinct. I never heard it put like that. I agree with you a thousand percent, but that was... Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty good, dude. That was good. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so what's the what's the frequency? So you're trying to stay in front of people. You want to give people the sense that you are everywhere, um, but obviously you want to be, you know, out there actually talking to clients, closing deals, and and all that stuff. So where where does what's what's a good content plan for one of your clients? Question. How much time are they spending, you know, producing video versus let's say posting, promoting, engaging? And stuff like that. And then I want to ask you about engagement in a second, but let's just talk about the content production side. How much time so, do you want your clients to spend? Good question. Um, 
I don't think it just depends on what you're using video for. So like if there's different ways to use it for referral marketing and building your brand, you don't need to do more than two a month. It's not about more content. The biggest question we get is, Hey, I'm gonna do eight videos. I'm like, you're gonna be fucking tired. I'm going to be tired. Like, what do you want? Why do you want to do it? <laughs> like, you're, Greg you're, has I'm literally like, uttered those exact words. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm I'm tired, man. Like you're already making, I don't want to know if I can work with you. It sounds like too much work. Yes. Cause it's more impact. Your clients don't care how much videos you create. And with ads, you could stay in front of them really easily. So it comes down to budget. The more content you create, the bigger the buzz, your brand's going to grow. Some videos would do better than others and vice versa, but it doesn't matter because if I'm looking at a, it's not an annual marketing campaign. It's a monthly campaign times 12. It's a lot easier to get your head around that. And once you have that, it's just a matter. Okay. The concept's the same. If I'm going to start a video series, what are we listening to right now? We're on a podcast. You guys created a show called Real Estate Uncensored. You created a logo for Real Estate Uncensored. And then you created a publishing schedule for Real Estate Uncensored. What happens if you guys stop publishing on Real Estate Uncensored to your audience? People stop listening. Real Estate Uncensored is the excuse for you guys to remind everyone what you do. Is it, Am I wrong? Sure. We need the show to tie it together. Mm -hmm. So the show... Instead of creating a podcast, though, treat your video series as the exact same thing because that's what it is. A podcast is tough for a real estate agent to take it off into a local market. You guys have done a killer yeah, job. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough medium. Oh, this to is, not, this is, not, is exactly not what we do. Yeah, like our podcast is aimed at agents for that exact reason. I taught Greg years and years ago out of doing a version of Real Estate Uncensored for the general public. I, I haven't seen it work. There's there's 500 viral marketing clients who had do a video series and... All of those videos are turned into podcasts. None of the general public knows they exist because they're not looking for real estate content on podcasts. Right. It's yeah. it's impo It's a very tough uh, way to yeah. go. But the concept yeah. of a local video series is identical, though. Yeah, and yeah. The video series does great when it's on YouTube and it's on social media. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Um. So if that answers so the so question. twice a month, yeah. So twice a month, you can do you can do that. Um. I want to get into the using ads to to boost that content. Cause most people are, are so we're so ingrained in the real time content, real time engagement kind of Gary V paradigm that, I mean, Greg, even your first reaction is great. Let's do more, right? Let's do something every day, live every day. Right. And, and Mike, you pointed out, you can use ads to stay in front of people, same piece of content. So explain a little bit about what you mean by just using the ads to kind of boost that content. So if I'm, let's just say I'm doing one video a month. Um, when I distribute content, it's going on my channel, my YouTube channel, I'm video emailing that video out. I'm posting it organically to all my social platforms. And the reason why I like running ads to like my database, my custom audience of cell phone numbers and email lists comprised of people that I expect to send me referral business is because your, your personal page reach on your Facebook is only going to be like 18 to 19%, which means 80% of our potential business isn't even seeing our shit. Mm -hmm. So, um, with Facebook, it's a lot of changes have occurred. I don't, think Facebook's much of a lead gen platform in the real estate space. At least you can't even target anyone. So how the hell can you lead generate? Um, what you can do is retarget. And if you have a custom audience, I like uploading that to Facebook. Just hit the big old blue boost button, guys. This isn't rocket science that you're not trying to squeeze a lead out of your database. You don't need to. You just need to stay relevant. Hit the boost button to your custom audience each and every time. Spend five bucks a day, if that. And do that based upon uh, the frequency in between videos. So if you're doing two videos a month, boost for 14 days. If you're doing one video a month, boost for 29 days. And then you rinse and repeat. You rinse and repeat. For those of you guys doing retargeting, website visitors, retargeting engagement, that gets a little bit more advanced. But yeah. um, this is not rocket science. This is like hit a button, button and more of your people will see your stuff. Mm -hmm. 10 to 15% of the people who see your stuff, they'll be moving this year. Most don't know it yet. Some are going to die. Some are going to lose their jobs. Some are going to get divorced. Some are going to have kids like me. Um, but 100% of them have a referral for you. So if you market your sphere in your database for the referral business, that's the mindset. You'll naturally get their direct business as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I have a friend of mine that ran all kinds of ads uh, for clients. And that's exactly what they found at the end of the day that worked the best. And it was insanely how I many you can, you can generate super low quality buyer leads on Facebook. And it's the best way to like, if you have agents on your team that just want leads and they don't really care about the quality, it's the best way to keep them happy. Just give them a bunch of Facebook. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. so, that, so that's, so that's become very popular in the team world as, Hey, we generate leads. You get a hundred leads a month. It's like, great. They're all from Facebook. They all have no search intent. Right. Um, but in all that experimentation with ads, they found the best thing to do is just, like you said, you upload the emails 
of your database. You, you know, tag your website visitors and you just build a basic retargeting audience. That's not that hard to do on the back end. Uh, and then you just run, you just boost your existing content, video content is best. You boost it to that audience. It basically does the job of what Facebook used to let you do for free, which is if you had a bunch of page, page likes, those people would see your content. Well, now it's on a page is one to 5%. I'm surprised on a personal side, it's 15 to 18. I wouldn't be surprised if it's lower than that. Um, basically, Facebook is saying, hey, you're not going to reach 90% of the people that follow you unless you pay us. It's like, okay, yeah. great, fine. Show me where to just, all right, take my credit card, whatever. You know, um, let me put it's my content it. in front of the right people. It's, yeah, because exactly, it's you pay 150 bucks a month and the people that already should be doing business with you, May, you, you're making sure that you're staying in front of them. Uh, I was talking about this with um, one of our other previous uh, guests, uh, Zach Hammer, real estate growth hackers. And he was just saying, like he reread uh, Ninja Selling, right? Larry Kendall. And he was talking about just like the reminder of how powerful a very small database can be if you realize that 15% of them are relocating every year, right? Yep. Yeah. The and we, only... we completely take that for granted. Because we're taught to go chase business. 78% right. of people will close with the first agent they meet with. These are NAR stats, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a numbers game. It's just a different way to look at having conversations. You have, when you start creating content consistently, you're just going to have more conversations than if you don't. It's what you do with the conversations that you have. And you got to realize that one in 10, one in 15 of the conversations you have, whether they're reaching out to tell you about their new dog or ask you to go to a baseball game, um, they're moving. Like it's just mathematically possible. So you could literally look at your Facebook list and determine how much business is in there. The only mm -hmm. time this doesn't work is if people don't like you guys. And that's nothing anyone can help <laughs> you with. You're in the wrong damn business. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's so true. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're not getting business from your database, either you're doing a horrible job of talking to them or you are talking to them and they just don't want to hear from you. See, what we're getting at, guys, this is just farming. We all understand farming. Farm yeah, your database. Farm. Farm, farm people with video that you already know versus trying to knock on doors of strangers you never even met. Mm -hmm. And watch what happens. Here's another thing I'll, I'll throw out there. I have uh, people, Mike, what should I do? I got $2,500 a month to spend on fucking lead generation. Where should I spend it? I go, well, how many people do you have on your direct mail list? They'll say 100. Like, Great. Divide the 2,500 hours by 100 and buy them a gift and watch what fucking happens. Mm. Interesting. The money's, like always, the money's always right in front of us. Yeah, as opposed right to going now. and doing 2,500 into Zillow ads or something insane yeah, like that. I, I, yeah. If you go out and you gift somebody, like if you went out and you just grabbed one CEO and bought him a $2,500 sauna, I'm sorry, that dude's going to eventually buy a $3 million house from you. <laughs> There you go, Greg. Ah, that, that that's my goal right there. That's where your next one point eight just, million dollar listing came I think from. We just, I think we just branded Greg's permanent closing gifts now. Greg is permanently buying saunas for people in the San Francisco. That's right, Bay handing them out, <laughs> putting <laughs> saunas out like they're candy. I, I, I could do saunas, but I, I, what I'm going to do actually instead of saunas, I'm going to move them anywhere in the 40, lower forty eight. Uh, I'll move them for a hundred percent free. It'll be on my dime. And yeah. so you get a sauna, a barbecue, a security system. What do you want? But I mean, that is a branding thing, 100%. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, all, no jokes aside, I mean, the, the sauna thing doesn't sound too fucking bad. I got to tell you, you know, sit my chubby ass down in, in a nice in a warm sauna and you know, work off some pounds like Gene does and like Matt does. Matt, Matt needs to work on his body. I mean, we, we, need, we all know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> and that took a that took a very terrible left turn. How did we how did we get on this subject? If you guys like, can't uh, see this, you guys see Gene just dying laughing oh over God, here. You're nuts. You are nuts. God. It's like that movie. It's like that movie wrong turn. Oh uh, yeah, went down that path. The reason mm -hmm. why I pick on Matt all the time, because this is what Matt thinks about himself. And this is kind of what we all kind of know about Matt. But it's okay. We still love you, buddy. Oh, <laughs> uh, I have I have never run more than four miles in my entire life. Yeah, I don't I don't like to run. So believe it or not, yeah, that's I I sprint. I do not I do not do long distance running. Absolutely not. Uh, so yeah, I do look like that guy. If you made me go out and just run for five miles, I would die. Dude, I jog. I don't jog. I jog, which is a what very is very 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 slow version of running. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I, I jog. I thought it was halfway between a dorky isn't power that, walk and a jog. Yeah, isn't that just called power walking? Yeah. Dude, okay. Here's the funny thing about that, Mike, is that my girlfriend actually makes fun of me because she's actually a runner. And she'll run up next to me. And she'll power walk next to me when I'm jogging. 
And she'll just be like, so how's this feel? I'm like, shut up. But she, she really does do that. Horrible. That's funny. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, I love it. Um, there, there is, I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Anastasia. So she's, she's got an episode going a couple of hours ago. Uh, she went live and she's, uh, you know, like a fan of the show. She started listening to Real Estate Uncensored a couple of years ago and she's a musician, right? So she started a, a show about creativity and she interviews people, you know, kind of in and outside of real estate or in adjacent industries or whatever that are also artists, writers, musicians, whatever. So I was like one, I think I was the second guest on her thing. Um, but it's a great way to kind of, it gives her an excuse to go live, talk, talk with her database, but she's not talking about local real estate. She's talking about creativity, right? So that's something that is very important to her and it's a part of who she is and it's part of her background. Love um, so I just wanted to give her a shout out because that's, yeah, it, it was a great idea. She kind of ran the idea past me first because she had a couple of different ways that she could go, but that's a great way. She's hitting uh, a couple of birds with one stone. She gets to keep in touch with the database, but she's also um, building a bit of an audience in the real estate side too. And she can potentially recruit to that into, you know, EXP in her case. Um, let's, talk, let's talk about that. That's a perfect yeah. example. So someone who's a musician, how would they, what kind of content would they create? Well, I mean, my open houses, I'm just doing like two minute videos and I'm singing in front of them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably doing a community series, always focused on uh, music entertainment for the week. That could be Friday or Friday uh, lineup or something like that. She could theme it yep. all Friday, Friday vibes, weekend vibes. Mm -hmm. And just talk about the night, the musical scene each and every month. Her client events once a quarter are definitely music um, guest type related things, but her client yep. events are musical events. Like there's mm -hmm. so much you can do with it. Everyone has something. All she's and all she's got to do is just have a musical instrument in her content. Yeah, you don't have to sing yeah, exactly. it or use it. It's just a prop, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like she, could, she could use a flute and that could be her mic. Whatever that may be, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter. That's what people remember, though, is how you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if you're the if you're the real estate agent of choice in your city for all the music, for all the musicians. I mean, think about that. If you actually built an audience of just all the musicians in that space, now granted, it's probably a very poor audience to go after. You want to yeah. go after the former, you know what I'm saying? You want to go after the former musicians who now have a job and income yeah. and, and a bank and a credit score. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you were the, if you were the agent of choice for the people that used to be a pro musician that now work regular jobs, uh, yeah, you're going to, you're just, they're, you're going to, they're going to vibe with you more. Uh, it's going to totally. be easier for you to get attention. You're going to be instantly likable. They instantly feel like they have a connection. You have a shared background, shared side passion and a hobby. Uh, and that's really, that's, that's all that people need to make it. That's all that, all that you need to tip the scales over other agents, right? Because most other agents don't want to talk about their quote unquote private life. Um, and you know, I'm not saying you have to talk about your entire private life, but if you pick one thing about your personality and you build it a show and a brand around that, you can share that part of yourself and the rest of it can stay private, but you can't keep the whole thing private, right? right. And only talk about real estate and not be entertaining because all you're talking about is real estate because people don't, don't care. So if you find one thing, I think that's, that's what's another, another thing that people sometimes go screaming off in the other direction is they go, I'm just not going to worry about all that marketing stuff. I'm just going to go online and be myself. And so they talk about anything and everything. And there is no, there is no brand. There's no cohesion. People don't know what they do because they're talking about so many different things because they've just decided, Oh, I'm not going to filter myself at all. It's like, well, that's not that, that doesn't help either. Yep. The whole point of marketing is to package yourself and sacrifice certain parts of what you talk about publicly. So that people instantly understand who you are and what you do. So yep. pick something that you can talk about forever, right? Talk about that all the time, mix in a little bit of real estate, you know, 80, 20, but leave the other parts of you for behind the scenes. You know, this is why, like I've had to explain to people, um, why don't I talk about all the books that I read? Right. Cause I could talk about that all day long. So because that doesn't reinforce micro famous reinforces somebody else's book. So I could talk all day long about what books I read, but that doesn't do anything for my brand unless I was, unless I wanted to build an entire brand around like Ty Lopez with his, the, the, the membership course that he used to have back in the day, that was all based around the cliff notes of his book. So it made perfect sense for him to talk about the books he was reading on social media because it tied in directly to what he was selling. Yep. But that's if, if I'm, if I'm doing what I do, which is podcast production for coaches and consultants, me talking about all the books that I'm reading, that might interest me. That does nothing for my brand. So I don't talk about it publicly, right? And I think that's, uh, people have to understand, like working with someone like you, Mike, is where you can explain that to them and say, hey, let's build a show around something. Give me the list of all the stuff that you enjoy, but we're gonna pick out one thing and we're gonna build the show around that thing 
so that you have a reason to be memorable. Correct. Everyone has the one thing too. That's it. You mm-hmm. said it on the head. Something. It's what is the one thing for you? Um, I'll leave one more thought. I just thought this was a good example. So this dude calls me from Portland. He just scheduled a, a call. I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, I listen to the show. Cool. He's a tennis player. So hmm. I was just like giving him some free advice on some while we do that. And he's like, mm-hmm. so how do I do the show? I just can't tie it in. I'm like, so what kind of tennis player? I'm a pro tennis player. The guy that ends up, he eats and breathes tennis. So hmm. I'm like, well, the name of your show is now called Serving, uh, insert neighborhood name. And mm-hmm. he wants to do food and whatnot, but he wants to tie in a tennis personality. So I go, you're going to go ahead and get your show, mic, and then you're going to wear <laughs> a tennis shirt on every fucking episode. And that's the one thing people are going to remember for you. And yep. he's out creating content this, this weekend on it. So oh, that's there's such always, a good niche too. Holy cow. That's just a guaranteed well, stream all, of $2 million dollar listings. Yeah. It's all leisure. So he's going to be covering yep. like the, he's all going to be covering like the golf, the golf places and the things to do with that, because that's what he does anyways. And it's really mm-hmm. always the brand when you're smiling on video, um, there's two things that have to happen and you know, you hit it one, you got to be smiling while you're doing the videos, but two, you got to get your first hater. And once you do, you know, you hit it right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We love our haters, man. We love our haters. Wait, Greg, do you have uh, do you have any of our hate mail that we can read our me, our mean tweets, our mean reviews? I oh. do not. But oh, man. Give me, give me 10 so, seconds. All right. Yeah, exactly. Let's give Gene <laughs> 10 seconds. All right. So Mike, uh, where can people go to hate on you? Uh, what's your, um, uh, yeah, you can get, you can hit on me on my Facebook page, <laughs> my YouTube page <laughs> or, uh, Instagram handle. Uh, you can just find me if you guys want to check out some of the stuff you're doing. It's real estate marketing, dude.com um, real estate marketing, dude.com. And that's also the name of all the handles. If you want to search us on social and see uh, what some other agents are doing, but thanks for having me guys. That was a lot of fun. That was a fun, uh, Greg, how do people reach you? Um, <clears throat> they're going to call you for, uh, to book a time. Uh, it's 402-551-1112, 1112. Uh, and so, yeah, just reach, reach out to Matt. He'll book a time uh, for us to hang out. But if you actually really do want to hang out, feel free and reach out to me at 925-915-1970. That's actually a real number. Um, and this is surprisingly how little I've talked in this entire show. I, mean, like, I know, and I find that outrageous. It is outrageous. <laughs> and this is what I'm going to do. Goodbye, Matt. Okay. 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 Now he's back. <laughs> I haven't talked at all in this conversation, and I find that outrageous. Oh man! Outrageous? All right. So, and and just so people understand, the reason that you should talk to Greg is twofold. Number one, Greg just likes to help. So he has a, he's a big softy, and he will coach you, and he will guide you, and he will motivate you, and he'll give you a good solid kick in the pants if that's what you need. Uh, but more specifically, if you're interested, if you're thinking about moving brokerages, if you're looking at your numbers, going, why the hell am I paying this this brokerage for an office I can't even go into? Or the next thing, the, the next time something like this comes around, they're going to board that office shut with plywood, and I'm basically paying for an office that I can't use. Uh, and you're looking at going, you know, you've already had to go virtual anyway. Right. And you now you want more support and more community and more resources. And you maybe you want to get in on that offer where you can tell your clients that they can move you, you know, you can move them cross country for free. Uh, that's what we're building with EXP. Right. So reach out, get on the phone with Greg. He'll explain it, break down the details, go over the numbers. Uh, the numbers will make sense. The numbers pencil out. It makes sense to move to a brokerage that was built for this environment that we now live in, where at any time, you know, your office might be shut down or they're going to start letting leases go right? Physical offices for, for agents in most cases are, we're finding out they weren't essential to begin with, right? Especially if you're motivated, right? So uh, if you want to save the money and get into an environment and a company that's actually built for this age, talk to Greg. How's that, Greg? I, 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 we're going to take that. We're going to use that as a snippet and as an ad uh, from, from moving my forward from this point. But yeah, guys, hang out with me. Give me a call. You guys got my number. We got the evil bald ninja. How does the Volopi uh, get contacted. I'm not doing it unless you say it right for once. <laughs> Go ahead. It's been a long time. Don't make me start reading one star reviews. Shut the fuck up. Just read them. <laughs> All right, ready? Wait, hold on. Maybe, maybe lose. These are these are gold, dude. These are these are actually gold. There you go. Ready? It, uh, <laughs> idiotic, profane, <laughs> unprofessional, and I found no useful information. That was one. Here's another one. This one's pretty good. Though. This is someone stated, quote, the Beavis and Butthead of real estate. Their fourth grade vocabulary mixed with a punk like behavior is embarrassed. It's embarrassing to our industry. This podcast represents the worst possible representation of our industry and should be reported to the NAR. <laughs> the NAR hasn't done shit in 25 years. You think they're going to fucking start right now? 
Yeah, exactly. They're they're not even they're not even to keep all agents from being reclassified as employees. That that should be right. their one and only job is to not fuck that up, and they will fuck that up. Yes. Yeah. Thank Listen, you, call, thank you, NAR. When I called the NAR to report the podcast, they said we got bigger things right now. We're worried about this guy that keeps leaving hot tubs on people's porches. No <laughs> <laughs> area. That's what happened. That's, so I, that's the response I got. I said, oh, I'll call back later. <laughs> oh my god all right let's let's wrap this up that was awesome though i love i love i love the mean reviews <laughs> oh i you know what to all my haters and to all matt's haters to all gene's haters to all mike's haters you know what we love you guys thank you so much and gals for being such douchebags and we hope you come back i hope you fuck yourself and i really really hope you have a horrible fucking day but you know what? <laughs> Keep the show. Wow. Jesus. My I'm just, goodness, not pulling any punches. All right. I'm pissed in your Cheerios, Mike. Just yeah. tell really throw, uh, throw a little bow. Little, let's do a blue bow around this episode in honor of Gene breaking from his usual routine. Uh, let's do a blue t shirt type of bow around this episode. Let's wrap it up. Let's that do is it. not your call. That's my job. That's my job. I picked okay. out the color. That's my job. All right, fine. A blue That's bow. Right. There it is. Not blue balls, blue bow. I want everybody to understand that. There's a big difference in, in sometimes in people's different lives. Uh, but, you guys, we love you to pieces. Thank you so much. Um, and as uh, our friend Keith here goes earmuffs uh, because he's like, holy shit, balls. But, you guys, thank Actually, you. Actually, hold on. What Keith said was eat muffs, by the way. Eat muffs? Oh, eat muffs. He didn't say earmuffs. He said eat muffs. What the fuck are eat muffs? <laughs> what are eat muffs? I don't even want to know. That's for next week. Okay, this is going down the wrong rails. Wow. <laughs> guys, we love you to pieces. Guys, give us a five star and a two star rating on every single place so you guys go ahead and get your podcast uh, reviews. It helps give us a, uh, a little, little, little bit of a boost on our algorithm so that we can be more visible to all the people around us. Give Mike a shout out. Um, give Gina a shout out. Give Matt a shout out. You don't have to give me a shout out. Um, but I love you to pieces. Until next time, peace out, ninjas. We go.